Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review we are looking at the Figma Attack on Titan Armin R Alert. And if you want to see what the packaging looks like, in case you're on the hunt for one of these guys, it is this, the yellow one. Notably yellow, easy to stand out when you're looking at listings. EX017, that's his name in Japanese. That's the uh, licensing sticker, so you know that it's legit. That's what the back of the packaging looks like. There you go. So this guy is basically the exact same figure as, um, actually as all of them, you know, just give or take a little bit here and there. So I'm going to try to kind of get through this quickly. If you want to see anything in more detail, check the listing for any of the, or the listing, check the review for any of the other guys and you'll be able to see everything in detail, but I will go through all of it while we're here. So first thing I want to show you is that his height is just about 14 centimeters, which places him at just about five and a half inches. Pretty standard size for a Figma. Pretty standard amount of detail for a Figma. One of the better batches, I actually should say. Uh, these Attack on Titan figures are really good. You should know that because they've been in at least one of my year-end top 10 figure videos. So he comes with the standard Figma display stage. You get the upright piece. You do get the little extension piece to give you that angle bend right there. So that's awesome. You get the Figma baggie, which I'm not going to bother showing you. We get a whole array of hands. So we have the two sword holding hands with the fingers that go through the... Um, they're not really trigger guards, but whatever you want to call those. Angled hands open hands and then jazz hands and of course we have the two fist hands on either side we do get the two swords they're both the same i'll just show you one of them as we go through it great amount of detail we have some varying paint tones down there nice blade detail the blades do come off so you can use that while posing and then of course you can see the two little trigger guard things i was talking about right there so that will be useful. So we get those. We also get the cape or cloak. And that just goes over his shoulders. You can pop the head off like that. Standard Figma joints. We'll get through the articulation in a minute. And you put the cape or cloak, whatever you want to call it, over there. Put the head back down. And there you have it. You really don't need it, but he does come with like a little clear peg that can go through that hole and then into the back itself to hold everything in place. Uh, this guy didn't come with one. Uh, I bought it used technically, so uh, it was supposed to be like new, but whatever. It's just a little clear peg that goes through that clear piece and then into the back. So it's, it's useful, but not altogether necessary. Then we also have some alternate faces. We have the plain face, which is right there. Nicely detailed, looks pretty accurate. We have the yelling, oh my gosh, that just happened face. I don't want to tell you why that's useful if you haven't seen the show. And then we also have this one, which would probably follow up the one that I just showed you. Again, nice, useful head, but I don't want to talk about it too much because I don't want to give away any spoilers. So we have that. He does come with a spare wrist hinge, most Figmas do, you don't tend to need them. We have the 3D maneuvering gear, or apparently this is a controversial piece because nobody seems to know what to call it, everybody always argues in my videos. Uh, I call it 3D maneuvering gear, I, uh, I think that's accurate. Either way, it's the stuff that they wear that lets them zip around like Spider-Man without being Spider-Man. I'll show you how that goes on him as we go through the video, but it's a nice piece. We have lots of flexible bits and lots of paint work. You can see the different tones in there. Lots of sculpt work. Very cool accessory. And then to go with this, we have two things. One is actual ropes that can be used to hook him up like he's actually swinging from thing to thing with clear hooks, of course, so it doesn't stand out anything other than the ropes. And then we also have some plastic molded hooks, which I have to grab, so I'm going to cut the video and I'll go to that. So these are the molded hooks or spikes. I would have been able to just show you them, but the cat moved them on me. So there they go, and you can see lots of detail even in the little tiny tip part. And then they just peg in again. I'll show you that. Some of this stuff I won't even bother showing you until I actually get to the end of the video where I pose the guy so you can see him in action. Uh, but like I said, it's the exact same as all of the other uh, Attack on Titan figures. And then we also get the uh, little burst effects. We get one for each side. That just shows the gas coming out when he launches the, uh, whatever they're called, the little hook things. And those just go on there. Again, you'll see that all at the end. So we get a bunch of stuff. And then lastly, we get this. This one goes on the back of this. This little circular piece with the little tab on it. That comes off. 
this goes on and that is to look like the gas that is expelled from the unit as they're zipping around in that awesome fashion that they do in the show. So let's look at the actual figure. You already saw the faces, lots of good detail in those eyes and the face, very nicely done. No different for the insignia on the shoulder and on the back. Some people say these rub off from the uh, cloak. I haven't had that happen, so I'm thinking maybe they bought bootlegs. Not sure though. Either way, it looks really good. We have the insignia on the chest, even smaller, still nice and crisp. Paintwork for all the buckles and buttons and everything. Really nicely done. I mean, it could be a little cleaner, but for what you're getting here, I'm not going to complain. It's it's pretty darn clean. It looks really good. We even have the different tones down here for the belt. Everything looks really, really good. So as far as the articulation goes, uh, before we get to anything else, I want to point out that the jacket is a soft material, so it won't get in the way. Same thing with the skirt thingy. And it's separate pieces, so it really won't get in the way. Articulation for the head includes the standard Figma ball peg hinge. So we have the ball peg going into the head, so this can just move around on that. Then we have the hinge that lets the head go forward and back. Then we have the straight peg that goes down into the neck that lets the head rotate. The neck itself, technically articulated, but you're really not going to get anything out of it, so we don't need to talk about it. Let's put the head back on. I should probably mention, be careful with the hair. Some of these pieces are fairly small. I suppose they could be broken if you weren't being careful. No big deal though. If you want to swap out the faces, I guess I might as well point that out while we're here. You just pull off the front of the hair, and like I said, you do want to be careful. And then you just pull out the face and put a new face on and close the hair back up. No problem. For the shoulders, we have the same type of hinge as the upper head joint. So we have a ball peg that goes into the torso that moves the entire arm around. We have the ball hinge right there. And then we have that straight peg that goes down into the bicep for our bicep swivel. We have a single hinge for the elbow. Technically it can rotate. It's just a straight peg on either end, but you really don't need that too much. You get pretty good range of motion out of that elbow. For the wrist, we have a standard ball hinge, so straight peg going into the forearm and into the hand, and then we have the hinge. Be careful swapping these out. I've never broken one, but they are tiny, so you could potentially break that wrist joint. You do get a spare, but you don't want to break it anyway. For the upper torso, let's see, I don't remember, actually. Yeah, it doesn't want to come out, so I'm thinking it's just a double ball peg in that upper torso, but it does give you full rotation, and it does lean forward and back. So that's not too bad, it leans side to side also. And then for the lower torso, we have a single ball peg that goes up into the lower torso, and then it's actually a three-way ball peg that goes up, and then one for each hip. So you can move him around on that upper ball peg, lean him forward and back, side to side, rotate him, and then you can use those other ball pegs for the hips. You can see the socket in there, which allows the leg to move around. All of this stuff in here is soft plastic, so you don't have any trouble posing him. Move it around on that ball socket. And you can also rotate the thigh around the uh, socket itself. And you also get a split, or a, a split, a cut joint or a swivel at the top of that strap. So you really should have no trouble posing his legs in any way, shape, or form. Should be just fine. For the knees, we get a single jointed standard Figma hinge for the knee. Really good range of motion, not too bad looking either, so that's pretty good. And then same type of joint for the ankle, just a standard hinge. You can rotate the foot around for an ankle rocker because the peg goes in at an angle. Instead of going straight down, it goes in forward, so that gives you your ankle rocker. And we get a toe hinge, so pretty decent spread of articulation. Not too much to be upset about there. Again, you guys know by now, I really do like these Figma Attack on Titan figures. Now let's talk about the 3DM gear, if you want to call it that. You just peg this big black and silver peg into this spot right here. You can peg these little silver pegs. You can see that right there. That goes into the belt on both sides. And then this peg goes in to the thigh. And this peg is technically on a ball peg, so it can move around as you pose the figure, so that goes in there. Be careful with this because it is a fragile setup, but it's really nice once you get it all put together. And that goes in there. Sometimes they don't want to go in. I would suggest you heat the legs up a little bit with a hair dryer just so that you don't have to force anything, but they do peg in there. And these are soft, and these are soft, so be careful with that. You don't want to pull those out. This looks like it's hinged. There is no hinge in there. There are no moving parts, so be careful with that. 
Okay, so now, once that's all on, pretend these are connected, you can put these molded pieces in there, like it's shooting. And this is also where you will connect these guys, like that, roughly. I'm just going to stick it on there so you can see for now. So you have that, and then the real rope ones peg in just the same way, they just have real rope here to re replace that. Be careful. As you can see, they are flexible, but they are not bendable. They do not bend, so don't do that. You will break them. They're just not super rigid. So there's that, and then like I said, this goes in place of there. Uh, so that's pretty much it. It's a really, really solid figure. I do like it a lot. Uh, I think you guys would like it a lot too. I should probably, should probably point this out. This connects to the back end of the sword if you're not familiar with them. With them. That's all you do with that. So the sword is connected via cable. So there you go guys. I definitely recommend it. This guy is hard to track down. I waited a long time to get one since he was an exclusive. Finally got a good deal so I nabbed him as fast as I could. I think you guys should probably do the same because it's a really solid figure and you need to complete the team. You don't necessarily need that version of Levi where he's wearing like the cleaning clothes or whatever, but I think you should have all four of the main guys and that's why I got it and that's why I recommend it. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see my upcoming figure reviews, custom figures, and other good stuff. And in the meantime, keep collecting.